pleasure always having you to join me and allow me to come into your home. I have a very special guest, and this is the second time that she has been on the show, Cindy Hurst, and she is the producer of The Natural Woman. Welcome, Cindy. It's a pleasure having you again. Thank you for having me. Yeah, the guest, I got so many phone calls <laughs> in demand for you to come back wow. and to talk about the natural uh, hair products, the nat natural hair, the work that you're doing. Congratulations. Thank you. You've been on a tour since the last time you was here. Yes. Um, in fact, the last time I was here, I was about to embark on the tour. We did the, um, I call it the world premiere screening at uh -huh. Southern University on October the 8th. Since that time, um, we've gone to Morehouse. Um, I did a hair show here in New Orleans locally, uh, the True Roots Natural Hair Show. We are going to Virginia Commonwealth University on Thursday. And we have other universities that have signed up as well. So it's going really well. What, what really made you and what inspired you to produce and want to produce a documentary on natural hair? I wanted to produce a documentary on natural hair mainly because I realized that there was a lot of negative connotation that was associated with wearing your hair naturally. And I really wanted to get to um, the root of the matter, no pun intended. <laughs> but I really did want to examine the psychological aspects of uh, why we had issues with wearing our hair naturally. So I began to speak to different women because I myself had a negative experience when I decided to wear my hair naturally. And whenever I would see other natural women, um, we had a connection. So I wanted to talk to these women and get their stories as well. And through speaking with these women, I realized that there was an underlying issue because they had negative experiences as well with their spouses, with their families. So I took it a step further and began um, interviewing black psychologists, African black psychologists. And I guess it basically boils down to, boils down to uh, conditioning that we've had mm -hmm. as a race of people living in America and the dominant cultural influence. And you can really see that, you know, as you drive down the street. Um, Sometimes I drive down the street and I see women, uh, African American women, with different color hair, blue, red, yellow, uh, weaves, all into one setting of their hair. And I'm looking at, as a, as a former hairstylist, the damages that they're doing to their natural hair with the micro braids, the pulling of the the braids that's so tight, uh, especially with the little children, that they don't really know the damage that they're doing to their hair. And so, you're right, there's an image. Uh, it wasn't acceptable to have an afro or kinky hair, and the, and the straighter you got your hair, or the straight, the good hair, bad hair syndrome, that, and that's still really part of the vocabulary today. I hear people say, good hair. Oh, you have good hair, why are you doing that? Yes. What is good hair? Good hair is hair that grows out of your scalp the way it naturally grows out. That's my definition of good hair. And I think that we just basically, as, as African people, and I say African people who live in America, we really don't have a point of reference with much of our heritage at all. We were, I, I think that a lot of people believe that our history started with slavery, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we have a, a, a very rich his, history mm -hmm. that goes far beyond mm -hmm. slavery. Mm -hmm. And I think that once uh, we began reaching back for that history, and one of the things that we can do to help us to get back in touch with our history is to do things like wearing our hair naturally. Because you go through a transformation. It's almost like a spiritual transformation mm -hmm. when you take that step mm -hmm. and start doing things that are natural to your culture. Mm -hmm. and, and just be happy with yourself and not be too concerned as if you have this sex appeal to someone else. And that's and, and basically that's what women go through. Yes, you know? they're they're looking for I mean we've been trained that, you know, to have the straight, long flowing hair is what is considered to be sexy and alluring to men. And not only black women, but black men have been trained to think that's what's sexy and alluring. And I mean, once upon a time Men wanted the light-skinned mm -hmm. woman with the long hair, mm -hmm. and that was like the pinnacle of beauty. Mm -hmm. And to have 
to acquire a woman like that, you know, black men felt really good about themselves. Now, I'm not making a blanket statement saying that all black men mm -hmm. feel or felt that way, but I mean, it's no secret. We know that at one point that was what we considered to be attractive. I thank God that now we're stepping out a little bit further and women are starting to be trailbla trailblazers and uh, start doing different things with their hair and, and just being more natural. So you begin to see it more now? Yes, I, I'm starting to see a trend now. I think it's because we live in a climate now where people are just tired and they're just saying, hey, I'm tired of spending money. I'm tired of sitting in beauty salons all day long. And, and they've seen other women. I probably would not have gone natural had I not seen other women doing it. So now we have more women starting to be the example for mm -hmm. other women and thank God for children. We still have a long way to go, but I think I'm starting to see it more now than I, than I did maybe five years ago, certainly when I first went natural because mm -hmm. I was like an anomaly among a lot of women, especially in the South, when I decided to go natural. The South was totally different because I, I remember um, coming up, you just had to get that straightening comb, and let me tell you something, the heat would be just burning you, burning your scalp, burning your neck, and it just really, you know, I hated that day, and I, I was very happy that my mom, uh, she didn't really do that to me a lot, you know, every now and then, but my mother sort of, she sort of kept my hair in a natural state, so I think that has a lot to do with me now uh, being natural, because my mom didn't really do anything to take my curls out. She didn't do anything to change the transformation of it. Uh, she just dealt with it and it wasn't easy to deal with because it was really thick and, and, and long. But my mom, she just didn't do anything to change that. And I've never seen her do a lot of different things to change the natural uh, uh, state of her hair. So I guess that's probably why I am more with, uh, have the confidence that I have because it, Thinking back and going back into my childhood, she didn't do a lot of that. She just, just basically groomed, uh, shampoo, conditioned, and, and just groomed her hair. That's what she did. So she didn't worry about putting chemicals and all of that stuff. You know, that wasn't something. But I think my hair was her pride and joy. That's what I think. You know, and uh, she just liked the plaits and that sort of stuff, you know. So I think I, I can really thank my mom for that. Yeah, and I think that it's going to take um, mothers going back to it. Because mm -hmm. if you realize, if you recognize that as black women, we have the media to deal with, can you imagine what our children go through at school? Mm -hmm. um, like the little girl in the documentary. Yeah. She is teased endlessly about let's her Let's look head. at the documentary. Let's, let's see what the child had to go through. So let's look at the <coughs> documentary, uh, The Trail of Natural Woman. It's just, you know, how these images are setting everybody's head of how you're supposed to be here, but I'm trying to fit this. You know, and that's, we need the conversation centered around hair. I was talking to someone just a couple of days ago, and he was saying that he do not like to see gray on anyone. And so there's another issue that goes with, you know, what are we saying? So he said, I don't like to see it on myself, and I don't like to see it on anyone else. So I, I said to him, well, do you think it's natural to really go and change the natural state? Because I know, you know, whatever gray is in my hair is going to remain. I'm not going to change that because I, I think gray hair is beautiful. And I see women uh, and men that have beautiful gray hair, and I think it's just attractive. And so we go through all those little, I, I think sometimes it could be insecurities of, of who we are and what we have. Um, and Cindy, I see now where women are weaving their hair so much that they're beginning to get the bald spots from the damage to their hair, to the, to, to the, the scalp and to everything else. I've, um, on the tour uh, that we're doing across the, the country at the universities, there's um, Dr. Daryl Scriven. He is a philosopher and he teaches at Tuskegee University. And after the Morehouse screening, he made a statement to me afterwards and he said, do you realize that 